Alright guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and today we are revisiting the RX 6500 XT. That's right, we're taking another look at quite possibly the worst graphics card I have ever tested, so we can find out exactly how well it's holding up as we head into 2024. I actually got the idea for this video during my recent GPU benchmark of Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, where I did test the 6500 XT, but it absolutely crumbled using only the low preset at 1080p. And that really got me thinking, can this GPU even play modern games at 1080p using the lowest settings? Well, that's exactly what we're going to find out today as I've benchmarked 10 different games that have released over the last 12 months so we can see exactly how suitable the 6500 XT really is for modern gaming. If, like me, you blocked all trace of the 6500 XT from your memory, it might be worth just a quick recap, as this GPU actually only launched in January 2022, so it's not even two years old at the time of filming. It was, however, an absolutely dire product even when it came out, offering just 4GB of VRAM, a 64-bit memory interface, and only 4 PCIe 4.0 lanes, among a whole host of other issues. For this video then, like I said, we are benchmarking 10 different games using the lowest in-game presets, and that's also with FSR disabled, so there's no upscaling, we're only focusing on native 1080p. Ray tracing is also, of course, going to be off, we're not even thinking about that, apart from games where it's integrated into the engine like Avatar, and simply can't be disabled. All of our benchmarking was done using our regular GPU test system, which is provided to us by PC Specialist. This is built on Intel's i9-3900KS CPU, paired with the Gigabyte Z790 Gaming X AX motherboard, and we've got 32 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinum DDR5 memory. Of course, we're also using the latest driver available at the time of testing, so that was the Adrenaline 23.12.1 driver. Finally, just to establish a baseline for this video, I'm going to be generous to the 6500 XT and say that as a bare minimum, anything over 30 FPS we're going to consider playable just for the purposes of this video, but of course anything under 30 FPS I will mark down as a fail. Naturally, a lot of you watching will probably want a fair bit more than 30 FPS, but let's not get our hopes too high and find out how this GPU actually got on. Kicking off then with Alan Wake 2, here we are using the low preset. Before I even launched the game, however, I was actually met with an error message about not having the minimum spec of at least 6 gigs of VRAM, so that should probably give you an idea of what to expect. As it turns out, the frame rate is just totally unplayable, most of the time sitting in the 20 FPS region, and it's not even stable with the frame time chart looking quite a bit squiggly. That's even with the textures clearly not loading in properly as well. I've honestly never seen the FBI logo look so low res as it does here, while the ground texture is pretty woeful too. Just as confirmation then, over our benchmark run, we got an average FPS of 22.9 and a 1% low of 16.9. So Alan Wake 2 using the low preset is a big fail. Next up is Assassin's Creed Mirage, where we're starting with the low preset. This one surprised me as it was actually pretty smooth. The frame time graph was very consistent and the frame rate was staying north of 60 FPS the whole time. I would say that graphics and particularly the texture quality is not very impressive at all at these settings. It is a bit of an older engine now, but our focus is really whether or not the games are playable and this one is. We were even able to get away with the medium preset in Assassin's Creed Mirage as it was now hovering in the mid 50s but still very smooth with no frame time issues. As we can see from the benchmark graphs then, we're looking at an average frame rate of basically 70 FPS using the low preset and 60 FPS on medium, so Assassin's Creed Mirage is a good result 
for the 6500 XT. Moving on then, we come to Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Using the low preset in this one, it's straight up unplayable. Not only do textures just not load in, leaving us with something straight out of the PS2 era, but performance can't even maintain 30 FPS even in this state, so that's a pretty easy fail, as confirmed by the benchmark numbers with 1% lows of just 26.4 FPS. As for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, starting off on the minimum preset, I was expecting this one to play fine simply due to its nature, and sure enough, it was absolutely fine using the multiplayer benchmark, with frame rates around the 100 FPS mark and no issues with frame times. It also didn't look too bad in my opinion, which was pretty surprising. I also tried out the balance preset and that too was fine. Frame rates were naturally lower, more in the 70s and 80s, but that's still very respectable for the 6500 XT. Confirming that, we have the benchmark numbers, a smooth 102.2 FPS average using the minimum preset and 86.3 FPS average using the balance preset and no issues for the 1% lows either, so Modern Warfare 3 is going down as a success. Okay, so the next game is technically cheating as Cyberpunk 2077 did come out at the end of 2020, but given the Phantom Liberty expansion and the big 2.0 and even 2.1 updates landed just a few months ago, I figured it was worth including and we're starting with the low preset, but of course with FSR disabled. I have to say I was pretty surprised by this one. I was expecting a dumpster fire, but the frame rate was actually not too bad hovering in the 40 to 50 FPS region, and there were no frame time spikes during my test sequence either. Obviously, the frame rate is not super high, but I'd say it's still a surprisingly scalable experience, considering how demanding Cyberpunk can be at ultra settings. Now, I did also try the medium preset, but it doesn't give you very much headroom at all over the 30 FPS mark, as we can see from the benchmark numbers. The 1% lows dropped to 30.6 FPS, though the low preset was still a surprisingly good experience with 1% lows of 39.9 FPS and an average of 47.9. Moving on though to The Last of Us Part 1, we're using the very low preset for this one and it's another game that ran surprisingly well. Yes, there were a couple of minor frame time spikes as you can see, but nothing I really noticed too much while playing and frame rates again in the 40s and 50s is pretty reasonable. Again, I can't really vouch for the image quality as some of the textures looked pretty dire in my opinion, but it was playable and that's what we're interested in today. I also tried the low preset which was okay, but we were definitely starting to hit the 4GB VRAM limit as those frame time spikes were getting more and more common, so best sticking to the very low preset for this one. As we can see, Very Low did perform fine with 1% lows of 46 FPS and an average of 54.3. The low preset sees a bigger gap between the 1% lows and the average though, which is caused by the increased frame time spikes. Ratchet and Clank is up next then, and here we are testing with the very low preset. This is another game where the 4 gig frame buffer just causes too many problems with the frame times. Running around gave me stutter after stutter and there was one massive frame rate drop in the middle of the test sequence too. The average frame rate seemed mostly okay, but the frame times are the real issue here. I also tried the low preset just out of interest and it was the same thing, but only worse. We can see that from the benchmark numbers too, the 1% lows are well behind the average frame rates indicating poor frame time stability. Moving on then to the Resident Evil 4 Remake. Here we're using the prioritized performance preset. I was expecting good results here as the RE engine has proved to be very scalable in the past, and so it proved with smooth frame rates and frame times, mostly hovering in the 80 to 90 FPS region. And I actually think it looks pretty decent considering it's the equivalent of low settings. I did also try the balanced preset, which was okay, but again, it did introduce a few more frame time spikes, so I'd recommend sticking to the prioritized performance preset. As we can see from the benchmark numbers, that gave us a 1% low of 73 FPS and an average of 87.2 FPS, 
compared to just a 1% low of 38.2 FPS for the balance preset with a much larger gap between that and the average of 57.3. The penultimate game I tested is Star Wars Jedi Survivor, where we are using the low preset. This was another one that was just way too much for the 6500 XT to handle. Even in this initial test area on Coruscant, not only do we see erratic frame times, but we're also seeing regular dips below 30 FPS for the frame rate, so it's just not a good experience at all. In total, we saw a 1% low of 26.3 FPS and an average FPS of 36.4, so Jedi Survivor has to go down as a fail. Lastly then, we come to Starfield, where we're using the low preset, but with dynamic resolution turned off, and of course, we're at 100% resolution scale for native 1080p. Testing in a demanding area in the forests on Jemison, Frame rates are not good at 1080p, dipping into the low 30s, though going as high as about 40 FPS. I also have to say that low settings look truly, truly dire. They're very flickery and aliased and low res. Medium settings do look a whole heap better, but just do not run well at all on the 6500 XT. As we can see from the benchmark numbers though, even the low preset caused the 1% lows to drop below 30 FPS and the average is only 34.8, so again, we have to give Starfield another fail with the RX 6500 XT. So that is it for the 10 games I tested, and I'd be really interested to hear from you guys if that went how you were expecting. Speaking for myself, I wasn't expecting the 6500 XT to fail in every single game, especially with titles like Call of Duty and Assassin's Creed, which you do expect to be developed with older and slower hardware in mind. That said, of the 10 games I tested, 6 of them delivered sub 30 FPS results on the 6500 XT and that was at 1080p using the lowest in-game presets and in my opinion, that is a pretty shocking result. Yes, these are modern AAA titles, but I really think that's the whole point. We're only 2 years on from the launch of what was a £200 graphics card, if not more due to the shortages and it couldn't even play a majority of the games we tested at 30 FPS using the lowest settings. I really think that just goes to show how bad of an investment the 6500 XT would have been. The marketing around the 4 gig frame buffer for instance I think was pretty misleading even at the time and clearly that frame buffer is even more of an issue today. That's not even mentioning other issues such as the fact it only has two display outputs, there's no H.264 or H.265 video encode, and it only has four lanes of PCIe 4.0, so if you test it on a PCIe 3 platform, performance is going to be even worse than what we've shown today. So that is really where I'm going to leave this revisit. We already knew the 6500 XT was a dire product when it came out, and unfortunately, it's somehow even worse as we head in to 2024. That is going to do it for this video though guys, so if you liked it please do toss me a thumbs up and as always let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do subscribe if you haven't already and ding that notification bell so you don't miss out when we upload a new video and if you want to come carry on the conversation over in our discord server there'll be an invitation link for that down in the description. While you're there, you can also find a link to our merch store where you can pick up a cool t-shirt like the ones on screen. And if you are feeling particularly generous, you can even consider backing us on Patreon. That's it for this one though, guys. I'm Dominic for Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.